Hey everybody, Jason here again with GED and T Basics. And today on the video question line, we're going to cover another student question. Uh, the topic being diametric tolerance zones. And the question is Is the diameter symbol supposed to be used when the feature itself is circular or when the tolerance zone is circular? Or is it just a mismatch patchwork of rules? Uh, not quite a mismatch patchwork of rules, but there's some things to know. And we're going to go over all the different scenarios that you're going to be able to see. Uh, when we're using diametric tolerance zones. So what we're talking about here is the diameter symbol that we see in a feature control frame whenever our tolerance zone is diametric, right? So we see this position feature control frame controlling the position of this hole. Well, we know we're controlling the axis of a hole, right? And we're controlling a feature of size that's cylindrical. So the tolerance zone is being identified as a diameter of five thousandths. So we know the size of this diameter of this tolerance zone, the diameter of this tolerance zone is five thousandths because that's exactly what our feature control frame tells us. Diametrically, it's five thousandths. So this axis of this hole, the red axis created by the hole must stay inside this tolerance zone located and orientated to the datum reference frame, right? So the next example, we have no diameter symbol in the feature control frame. And that's because we're controlling the width feature, right? It'd be a, a width dimension arrow to the size of inch and a half plus or minus five thousandths in size. And the location of this width feature would be held to five thousandths. Well, we know our tolerance zone is two parallel planes whenever we're controlling the position of a width feature. So it's not a diametric tolerance zone. And that's pretty obvious as well, right? So we have two scenarios here with position. One position is controlling a cylindrical feature and the tolerance zone was 5,000 cylinder with a diameter of 5,000, right? And this one's two parallel planes spaced apart by 5,000. So again, no diameter symbol here. The same sort of story can be uh, found with perpendicularity. Perpendicularity is just controlling the orientation now instead of location but we know we're controlling uh, a cylindrical feature here, perpendicular to datum A, and we're showing a diameter symbol with a size of 10 thousandths, right? So we know the size of this tolerance zone is diametrically 10 thousandths. And again, no diameter symbol here, so we know we're controlling two parallel planes because we're controlling the midplane of this feature of size, right? So just the same as position, uh, just showing different examples here. So far we have the diameter symbol whenever our tolerance zone is clearly a cylindrical tolerance zone where we're controlling the size of that diameter, right? So now one unique scenario here is when we control the straightness of something. Well, if you know straightness, straightness can be applied to either surfaces or features of size. And we're applied to features of size, we're controlling the derived median line, right? So that's the center irregular, um, axis, not an axis because axes are always straight, but it's a derived median line. So it's an abstract irregular center line that represents the irregularities if there's any bow or twist in it, right? Whereas if we're controlling straightness on a surface, we're controlling the straightness of that one linear element of that surface. And that straightness is being held between two parallel lines, right? If we're looking at it from the end, we're controlling this element of that surface and we're controlling it between these two parallel lines, right? So we're controlling the straightness to a surface, again, no diameter symbol because our tolerance zone is not, a di is not diametric in nature, right? But if we are controlling a feature of size, now that tolerance zone, but if we are controlling a feature of size like we see here, we're controlling the derived median line, which as I said, was this irregular line or axis that represents the bow or twist in that part. And our tolerance zone has a diameter now of three thou. So we're controlling this center axis inside a cylindrical tolerance zone, right? If you can picture a cylindrical tolerance zone here, and that tolerance zone is three thousandths in diameter. So we've identified the tolerance zone size, right? Is a diameter of three thousandths. Now, some more round features, right? Obviously, run out and total run out are always going to be applied, or most of the time are going to be applied to um, round or cylindrical features. So if we're controlling uh, a round cylindrical feature, um, the instinct might be to say that it's going to have a diameter tolerance zone. 
our tolerance zone for total runout is going to be two concentric cylinders. So again, diametric in nature, but we're not putting the diameter symbol here because for many reasons, there's two diameters here, right? So uh, we're not identifying the size of those diameters as much as we're identifying the distance between them. So we're saying 10 thousandths is our tolerance zone. Well, that's just saying radially, these two concentric cylinders need to be spaced 10 thousandths apart. We're not sizing the diameters. You could have large diameters that are still spaced 10 thousandths apart. All we're saying with this feature control frame is that the radial distance needs to be 10 thousandths apart. And our form and location, since we're controlling runout, has to be held. And so all the surface elements, all these red surface elements need to, between, need to fall between these two tolerance zones. So hopefully you see that now that we're not, we don't have a diameter symbol for total runout because we're not controlling the size of either of these diameters, right? What we're controlling is a linear distance. So that's why it's not a diameter. It's a linear distance between these two concentric circles or concentric cylinders. So again, linear distance, not a diametric distance. Same thing for cylindricity. Cylindricity, we're just not controlling the location, right? We have two concentric circles. The linear distance or radial distance between these two cylinders must be 0 0.003. Now they can grow and shrink in size, right? Because the size dimension over here is going to control the size of this outside diameter. But the cylindricity is controlling form between two concentric cylinders and they're allowed to grow and shrink all they want as long as they stay radially distanced three thousandths apart. So again, this value is a linear distance, a radial linear distance, um, not a diametric, so we're not using the diameter symbol. Our goal is to be your best source for gd and information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd and on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd and community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd and and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles written by our training experts.